Now here's a car that we heard a lot about when it was codenamed YL7. Of course, now we know it's christened the Celerio. Well, this is the car that will replace the Zen Estilo and the A-Star. And Maruti say that this is going to be a spacious little hatch that's feature-packed and of course has a USB. That is the automated manual transmission. Well, let's drive it and find out what it's all about. The auto will only be available for the base two models, so you won't get all the bells and whistles, but equipment levels are still decent. It's a really nice dual tone interior and all the lines sort of flow down to the center like a waterfall and come down the central console. You've got some nice rotary air vents, um, you've got the music system, AC controls, all the knobs and switches are good quality. Now this is the auto uh, VXI version, uh, so it's a little pared down, it's not the top end. But meters and dials are nice and large and everything falls to our eye easily. You can regulate your security settings, your light settings and a lot more. The ZXI version has steering mounted controls. Overall, I think uh, it's a really pleasant and nice interior to be in. Let's take a look at the variants and what they offer. The auto will only be available in LXI and VXI versions and unfortunately will not get the options for safety features like ABS and airbags. These will only be offered on the ZXI for the manual. It's powered by the familiar K10 three-cylinder one-litre engine, but the engineers have made a number of improvements for better NVH performance and efficiency. All the changes to the engine have really helped and uh, it's a peppy little engine, responsive, you know, makes it easy to nip in and out of traffic, zoom ahead of those cars and get into the gaps. You put your foot down, you always find a little bit of power to get a move on. But the real innovation here is the automated manual transmission called Easy Drive. Though practically it works like any other auto would, it's different because basically it's a manual gearbox that uses hydraulic actuators and ECU to change gears for you, eliminating the use of a clutch for the driver. And this Easy Drive actually makes it really easy to drive. Now I've been ambling around these narrow lanes of Jodhpur and going in and out of traffic a bit and I have to say this ambles around extremely comfortably is this automatic manual transmission. It works as good as any auto box. In fact, I think the only real difference is that you can feel it when the gears shift. Whether it's a downshift or an upshift, you do know that it's happening. But otherwise than that, it's really, really practical. You can just be lazy when you're in traffic and let the auto box do its own work or then you can shift it into manual mode and then use it as you would a manual gearbox. The gearbox offers five speeds plus reverse. The driver can choose to pull to upshift and push to downshift. There's also a creep mode that allows the gearbox to function at low speeds without stressing the clutch too much. Should you want to drive it to the red line and um, push it a little harder, you can put it in manual mode where the gear will hold till the red line. And the shifts are pretty quick. Now should you slow down and come to a halt and forget, well, gearbox gets into first gear automatically itself to let you get a move on again. The great part about this auto box is since there's no power sapping torque converter, the fuel efficiency is almost good as a manual. In fact, Maruti say in test conditions it returned a 23.1 km per litre average, which is identical to the manual. And it works really well for efficiency because uh, even when you're cruising around at low speeds, it gets into fifth pretty quickly. 
so saving you a lot of fuel, keeping the RPM low. The thing is that the auto box tends to move up to the higher gears quickly to sit there for efficiency. So whenever you want to get a move on, you have to put your foot down a little heavily and then it jumps past third down to second making the engine spin at high RPMs and then you hear the sound and you feel like it's training, although it really isn't. The route gave us a chance to test all the capabilities of the Celerio, through the city, on windy roads, uphill sections and even flat out highway stretches. Now the steering is nice and it gives you enough feel but I just find it's a bit inconsistent and, and very often you find yourself having to pull it back to centre. However, it's a light steering and the car feels nimble and agile so driving in heavy traffic or parking in tight spots will be really easy. Now I'm driving the manual version, um, this is the ZXI so obviously I have a couple of more features, I have the steering mounted controls here, uh, down here you have everything that controls the Bluetooth functions and then I have uh, you know the audio and mute buttons, so really quite practical, everything available at hand. The gear lever is placed quite high up, so it falls to hand easily. It's a light and easy gearbox, but I find the shifts a bit notchy. The engine is responsive and pretty silent up to 3000 rpm. And like all Maruti engines, this one loves to be revved, so you can pull it happily up to the red line. But once again, I have to mention, when you rev hard, you hear it. This engine is actually quite a pleasure to drive. Um, be it in the auto version or in the manual version, it does really well. Uh, you know, I'm as comfortable ambling around in the city as I am now out on this open road, uh, wanting to do an overtake manoeuvre. I just put my foot down, I can find the power to get a move on. The engine, however, tends to get into an area of stall at low engine speeds. So you do need to slip the clutch at times and use a bit of throttle when starting up. We did a quick test on both the cars and we were quite surprised. The 0 to 100 km an hour for the manual comes up in 14.9 seconds, which is right up there with the competition in its class. And the auto comes up in 15.9 seconds, which is not bad either. Now I have to commend the roads here in Rajasthan because I really haven't found bumps and potholes enough to be able to judge the ride of this car. Uh, the roads are really smooth and so far, um, the Celerio has been pretty impressive, uh, at low speeds it sort of goes over everything pretty easily and even at high speeds there's not too much movement for a car of this size. Being able to stretch the Celerio's legs on the highway, I was pretty impressed with its capabilities. Out on the highway, especially when you're driving quick, you'll find the Celerio pretty capable, it feels stable and even though it's a small car, you feel quite secure. Having the whole experience of how it feels from behind the wheel, it was time for me to shift to the back seat. Space here in this back seat, leg room is really good, uh, head room is more than good I think and that's the beauty about it, it looks like a tall boy design when you sit inside but it doesn't really look like that, it's not square, it's not boxy from the outside. The Celerio comes across as a well-proportioned car and what I really liked is the fact that though it feels like a tall boy car from the inside, it really doesn't look square or boxy on the outside. It carries a newer version of the Suzuki grille, wraparound headlamps and a tall bumper which make the front quite interesting. The roof falls gently over to the rear which ends in a simple tailgate under which sits a pretty decent sized 235 litre boot. Sure, it's not a head-turning design, but it's definitely pleasant to the eye. Having driven both the versions of the Celerio, the auto and the manual, uh, I must say this car has impressed me quite a bit, that's my first impression. It's spacious, 
it's comfortable um, you've got quite a level of equipment the interiors are nice it looks good of course Maruti claim it's extremely fuel efficient and the engine performs well too so I think on all counts this car does pretty well and that easy drive automated manual transmission is one that is really practical and makes driving in the city very very easy and convenient you can expect that version to be priced around 50,000 more than the re regular manual versions but um, my overall impression is, I think, with the peace of mind that that badge gives you, this car is another one that's going to be a winner.